All right, guys. This is going to be a quick, um, quick little tutorial here. A um, little bit tough to set up an iPad and looking at a computer screen. So I'm going to show you what's important on here and how it works and why we develop some of the loads we do with some of the um, cartridge overall lengths and seating depths and different um, charge weights. So here we go. <clears throat> You've got a optimum barrel time sheet that I've that is knowledge out there. Every it's it's on the net. Now there's this, and then there's also the half minutes, which is these are all timed in milliseconds, and it you know there's nodes in between five and six. So here's all your half nodes. I've put this on the M14 forum as well. When you look at Two different ways of doing it. You've got shown right now on the screen is 44 grains of Argot with a Hornaday match bullet, bow tail hollow point. <coughs> Some guys like to load a little bit longer, and I load a lot shorter, and there's a reason. Um, what I look at is this particular cartridge right here is at 2.830. This is out of a 22 inch barrel using a federal case of 55.6, whether it be 55.5, 55.7, it's close enough. All right, Vargas here, 44 grains, okay? Apply, calculate. Now, if you look right here, this is your Pmax and your Z1, which is your burn rate. When these two marry up into a fine line, you've got a consistent charge. You look at your barrel time right here at 1.126, and that is um, one of the most common barrel time nodes for a 22 inch barrel. Your port pressure is here at 49,724, your muzzle pressure at 7994. Amount of propellant burnt is 95.93. I always try to stay between 93 and roughly 97% amount of propellant burnt. Um, I don't like to be in a situation where the propellant's burnt prior to um, the bullet exiting, exiting the, the muzzle. So you also have your ballistic efficiency here at 28.3. Here's a mu muzzle velocity at 2,646 feet per second. Now. This is a 2.830 cartridge length. I prefer 2.730, and there's a couple different reasons. At 2.730, my barrel time goes down to 1.090 instead of the 1.126. I reduce my charge weight, so I'm using less powder, okay? Apply, calculate, I'm at 1.125. You look over here, your graph looks perfect. Your PS, your pressure, chamber pressure is at 50,200, and your port pressure, your muzzle pressure, is at 7746, okay? Now, at 44 grains of powder, your muzzle pressure is 7994 it's a higher value at 43 grains it's 7746 so it's less less battery on the on the action um, additionally um, when you look at the 44 grains your chamber pressure is 49724 so i opt to reduce the muzzle pressure on a piston driven gun um, that's what's more important to me is to reduce that muzzle pressure and run a little bit higher chamber pressure and it's not by much it's by about 500 uh, psi now at the muzzle velocity at 43 grains a grain less of powder okay i'm at 2634 and on the 44 grains you're at 2646 so it's 12 feet per second slower um, your Ballistic efficiency is actually higher at 2.730. It's 28.7%. On the 
where at 44 grains at 2.830, you're at 28.3%. So it's ballistically, it's more efficient. Um, it graphs better. And I'm using less powder with better results. Now that's on a, on like, on a standard 22 inch barrel. If I drop this thing down to a soak them at 16 and a quarter, okay? Now with that 43 grain charge, I'm at 92% amount of propellant burnt and a barrel time of 937, which is only a couple off. It's 940s, your, your half node, okay? Don't like the velocity at 2451. You're gonna be obviously slower out of a 16 inch gun versus a 22 inch gun. But what I like is, I like to run it at, um, 44.4 grains, okay? There's my barrel time at 894. On your sheet, they don't have a 16 and a quarter, so the, it's, it's all graphed right here. And 895 is your .6 node for a 16 and a quarter inch gun. I'm at 894, so like I said, when you get into that situation, it is close enough. If you look at your feet per second, your 2534, your ballistic efficiency is at 25.7. Graph's perfect, everything lines up. Um, you, you know, your burn rate's 94.38. Now, if I change this to 2.830 in the SOCOM, your barrel time jumps up to 927 milliseconds, okay? Which, if I wanna continue with my 895 barrel time, I'm gonna have to run this up to 44.8, I believe. Maybe almost 45 grains. Okay, at 45.5, there's my 895. Now, if you look at your graph, the graph's not perfect. Okay, and there's never gonna be a perfect graph. Varget is one of the powders that I noticed that graphs, you know, very, very well. You know, you can look at this and say, okay, well, let's, I want my graph to be better. From an efficiency standpoint, you're down to 25.3. So if I reduce this to 280, and then I look at everything, I look at my barrel time, I'm still... I'm getting warmer as far as getting getting on the barrel time. Now look at this here. It's the line is more succinct, but it still has a slight double to it. So if I reduce my seating depth, you see it steps out. Okay? But I can also combat that with reducing the powder charge by a tenth of a grain, and then it levels back out. 45 grains. 895, 898. I can reduce this down to 2790, and it's going to reduce my barrel time again. 85. Okay, it steps out just a touch. But this is with the higher charge using more powder. Okay, so what I look at is I look at the graph and I look at barrel time. And at 44 point, I think it was four I had in here. Yeah, now if you look at that line, it is it is sharp. And I don't know how much of this you can actually see, but it's one of those things you're just gonna have to trust what I'm saying. So if you switched your powders to say 48.95, you know, you got your drop down here. Okay. Now look at your graph. Look how sp spread your P max and Z1 are. Okay, then you look at your barrel time. Look at your max chamber pressure is 54,000, or not max, but your chamber pressure is 54,114. Okay, you're also off on your barrel time by 15,000 milliseconds. So, right here, I, I 
typically don't like the muzzle pressure being any higher than 12,000 on a, on a Socom. So you're, you're flirting with it. Um, this I would probably reduce down to 2.720 to get that barrel time closer to where I want it. And you can do it a couple different ways. Like if you wanted to be at 2750, you know, there's no, no way of knowing what is what until you see it chart. You look at your, your powder charge, your length, and your barrel time. That's really what this program's all about. It gets you your optimum charge weight and barrel time. Now, at this here at 2750, I've got to increase my charge to probably 448. To have this thing get closer to the barrel time, it's well, probably 45 grains of 4895. Okay, but the it graphs like hell. So in a situation like this, I would go the opposite direction because now I'm over 12,000 psi. So I would go back to my barrel time sheet, and it's right here at the bottom. Soak them. I don't like that I'm over 12,000 PSI at muzzle pressure. Um, the speeds, it's, it's a little bit of a hot load. So what I would elect to do in a situation like that is look at the .934 load, okay? And some people like to just say, hey, let's just start at 100% fill rate, okay? That brings you down to 44.04 uh, grains of powder. Put your barrel time at 928, okay? It reduces your, your muzzle pressure and your chamber pressure accordingly, and you dropped about 60 feet per second. So at 934, I can back this down, you know, probably to 43.8. And that brings me to 935, okay? 2,521 feet per second. Um, I'm 100% comfortable with that load. You know, your ballistic efficiency is fine at 25.6. Amount of propellant burn, 94.4 is, is fine. So I would shoot that all day long. If you sat there and said, well, God damn, that just seems like it's kind of hot to me, not a problem. Okay. You can go to the next, next known node, published node here, which on a SOCOM would be 973. Okay, and it's not published. I did, um, yeah, it is published, excuse me. I went out and did a, another node in node eight, and the, it's just calculating the difference. You take six and seven, subtract, divide by two. That's your half node. And then you look at five and seven, the difference between those two, divide by three. And then you'll start to see your pattern for your mathematics. And then you can make seven and a half and you can make eight. Okay. So getting back to what I was saying here is if I wanted to go to node seven, I go to nine, seven, three, it's probably close to 42, eight. And I'm pretty sure that's a number that a lot of the guys are running with out there. Uh, 42, five, maybe that's nine, seven, seven. Okay. So the barrel time is the most critical thing. Um, you can do you know, the, the brass prep and, and all your preparations all well and good. But even at this here, at 977, I wouldn't reduce my charge here. What I would do is reduce my cartridge length to 2740. And that brings me down to my 9.974 and if you look, the graph tightened up a little bit. Your feet per second is 2447, so it's a touch slower. But that's with 4895. If I wanted to change bullets to, um, here, I'll just throw this. Uh, I'll throw a wrinkle at you. Bullet file, I'm going to go to a Hornaday. One ten V Max. Okay. And for a powder, I'm going to use forty one ninety eight. Okay. It's a faster powder. 
And if you look at 42 and a half grains, you're in the 749 um, barrel time, which so spending them about 3,000 feet per second. You know, your, your muzzle pressure is 10.9, chamber pressure is 57. But really where the sweet spot in these things is about 42.2. And the only reason I know this is I've tested it. And it brings you up at node four, 0 0.756, 0.756. Um, just under, it's 29.90 on the feet per second. Muzzle pressure came down to 10.8. Chamber pressure went up as a result of reducing one. The other one's increased. It's like a um, teeter-totter. But if you look at the chart, the chart's perfect. Amount of propellant burnt is 99.86, so you're almost 100% gone at the end of the, when at exit. Ballistic efficiency is a 27.7. Now this is a powder that you'll never find in the books for a, for a Socom, but um, this is a, a ram rack load, and uh, him and I have worked on this a little bit over um, the last couple months. He's kind of he he he's he's a genius. He nailed it, and I've manipulated it a little bit as far as cartridge length and and propellant, but um, propellant charge. Now, one of the things you got to keep in mind if you are using any type of magnum. Um, primer, CCI number 34, you've got to increase your shot start initiation pressure to 4,000. It is a must. It gets hotter. Okay. So, um, it doesn't change it a whole lot, but it's hotter and you got to, as you tweak to you know, say if I was running out at 42.8 or for 43 grains of, of of um, powder, and this muzzle pressure went up to 12,000, like, that's when you start beating the hell out of your action. So the guys that, that use this software, um, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I just never got around to doing it. And um, here it is. So you can, draw, you can play with any of the powders in here. Um, some powders, you know, look terrible. Um, I got a buddy down in Florida that likes ramshot. Um, but if you look, it, it doesn't graph great. Um, the barrel time's way, way, way off the grid. So you got to run with higher charge loads on these. And, you know, at like 45 grains, now that's with a, well, let me jump into a, a normal bullet that people use. Let's use a 168 grain with that okay 45 grains you're you know you've you've pegged the the chamber pressure okay you're down at under you got to get under okay so now we're back down to 60,000 psi but look at the graph on this it's just not a succinct fluid burn and that's what you got to look at so this with the Hornaday match, Ramshot Exterminator, 44 grains puts you at 0 0.903. Um, I would probably say that if I was gonna buy this powder and load for it, I would probably load towards the sixth or seventh, probably closer to the six and a half or the seven um, node, which would probably put you Right around 42 grains, 41.8. This isn't rocket science. It's just a matter of understanding um, and what you're looking for. And I've had some, some charges that graph terribly. But, um, you know, I've got the barrel time. The feet per second's okay. You know, this is a little bit slower, like 23.57 feet per second. And that is on the... Um, seventh node but it just you know I look at this situation here in terms of the graph and let me explode the graph 
this is your Z1, this is your Pmax. If we bounce back here to um, if we bounce back here to a 155 Hornaday match with 43 grains of argot, um, this is what I've been talking about. If you notice your Z1 right here and your Pmax, it's one definitive line. You're 95% burnt at 18.7 inches down the barrel length. Okay, and this is on a 22 inch gun. Um, you know, your muzzle, your chamber pressure is 49.7, muzzle pressure 77.52, all good numbers. The barrel time looks good, 26, 29 on the feet per second. Ballistic efficiency goes up, amount of propellant burnt. This is why this is a consistent load right here just because all of these variables line up. The feet per second's good. Your bullet travel at Pmax is 1.3 inches. Um, your barrel time at 10% is 1.129 milliseconds. Everything jives. And that's one of the differences in making a good load. There's a lot of people out there who say, hey, I'm just gonna do ladder tests and do this and do that. This software is designed so you don't have to ladder test. Once you Plug this in and dial it, dial it up, and your barrel time looks good, your feet per second look good, your, all your pressures are fine. Um, then you fine tune your cartridge length for it to be optimum. As I play with this cartridge length, your ballistic efficiency will change. Um, if I make this cartridge length instead of 2740 to say 2.830, okay. What happened to your ballistic efficiency? It dropped down to 27.7. Now, the only way to try to counteract that is to increase the charge and get the same barrel time. Now it's 28.3. So if a longer bullet with a higher charge has the same barrel time, the port pressure, muzzle pressure, excuse me, I, M1, M1A in the brain, is higher than what it is obviously because it has a higher charge so if you got to burn more powder have a higher muzzle pressure for almost the same exact results i'd rather leave a grain of powder in the in the jug have a higher ballistic efficiency at 2740 and use less powder there it is you look at your graph it's perfect. Your Pmax and your Z1, which is your burn rate, line up. Everything looks good. Um, then you've got 95% burned at your datum point. Your bullet travel. Um, bullet travel at exit is 18.6 inch, six, six inches. Time elapsed since 10% Pmax is 1.071 milliseconds. Some of this stuff, I look at it and it's... Uh, whatever the most Im important thing is right here which is your barrel time your muzzle pressure chamber pressure feet per second burn rate amount of propellant burnt and then obviously your graph so if you have any questions or want to know more shoot me an email um, john bauman 2488 at gmail and i will give you some help so I hope this sheds some light on it. A lot of people think that you can't um, use a ballistic program to come up with the optimum charge weight, but how can that be the case when we can use a ballistic program to predict bullet drop? So it's technology-based, and um, some of the old schoolers out there are not quite um, apt to working on a computer and figuring out a charge weight. It's, uh, you know, one of those things, granddaddy did it this way, so that's the way I'm going to do it, and that's all well and good. It's not for everybody, but it's a, it's definitely a tool to help you save money uh, by not having to go out and shoot, you know, 50 or 60 rounds of, of, you know, less than choice ammunition loads and then have it print four and five inch groups and shoot all over the place. You find a good load on here, you go shoot it, and nine times out of ten, like this 155, um, 
It shoots sub MOA all day long. Out of a Socom, out of a 22, out of the 19 and a quarter, um, it's a good, just a good charge. So, like I said, not for everybody, but this is something that, you know, some people were asking to have explained, so here it is.